we are not our co-wives. We are not our co-wives. And we have to stop looking at what she has or what she's doing because only we, we only see a piece and we only see our interpretation of it. But if we're minding our marriage and understanding what we really want in our marriage, then we realize that things are going to be a lot different for us than it is for anybody else. Warning, viewer discretion is advised. The content, views, and educational material you are about to experience could challenge your belief, trigger strong emotions, and frankly, piss you off. This isn't for everyone. If you're not ready to confront new ideas or if your feelings bruise easily, this might be the time to click away. Expect to be challenged, to think, and you might even want to scream at the screen. Proceed with caution and remember, you chose to be here. Let's get it. Assalamu alaikum. Peace is Coach Nyla, one of the co-founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships, as well as co-author of the book, Let's Talk Polygamy Uncensored. Okay, some of you may be new to this channel. Some of you may be returning to this channel. And for all of you who are here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for your return and all that other good stuff. Now, let's get to it. Do wives and polygamy or polygyny, if you will, because again, I may do this on every video when I say polygamy and polygyny, just because <laughs> sometimes it's just difficult for people to understand that polygyny is a specific term of polygamy. So polygyny is when a man is married to multiple women. So in this video, that's what we're gonna be talking about. Is it a thing where women in polygyny or wives in polygyny, if you will, want what their co-wives have? That's the question I'm going to put out there to you. Because if we think about it, we'll say, of course, of course they want what their, their co-wife has because they're sharing a man. They're sharing a husband. They want the same man. They want the same husband. So obviously, <laughs> obviously the answer is yes. Not really, not so obvious. Because if that's the case, that means that we are not multifaceted people. That means that um, we don't have different likes, that we are not saying that we are phony around other people, but you're putting out there, if, this is, if you say yes, if you say yes, you are putting out there that we are the same with every single person we are around. I mean, the same exact from when we get up in the morning to when we lay down at night <laughs> or whatever, you know, your schedule, whatever your schedule looks like. And we know we're not because we're multifaceted. There may be some things that we share with others that we don't share with some. There um, may be some times where we are doing particular things that we like with one person and doing other things that we like with another person. And I'm talking about whether that's friendship, well, uh, friendships, whether that's with children, whether that's with family members, anything like that. So if we as women, we as wives can be multifaceted and maybe or seem as though that we can be a different person, which we're not. It's just we have so many things going on with us that we don't have to be the same every time with everybody, then why do we believe or why would we believe that our husbands are the same exact way with one wife than he is with the other? And I'm not saying that um, the husbands are faking the funk or doing something different and being one way with one wife and intentionally being a different way with another wife. I'm saying that there are certain things that he may like that the other wife likes. There may be some things that he doesn't like that the other wife doesn't like, and they just share these things together. And it may be different for the other wife. And I'm gonna give you an example, one of the things, <laughs> not that he's different with it, but Coach Navier, he enjoys condiments on his food. I don't too much. I, some of them make me gag. I don't like the smell of some. It's a lot of different things. Uh, you could probably count on my, on one hand, the condiments that I may use on my food. Now my co-wife on the other hand, she enjoys condiments, <laughs> you know, as probably as much as Coach Davir does. 
And there are certain things that they can enjoy as far as meals together that he and I cannot enjoy together. Now, that doesn't mean that he's different, that he's not going to eat the certain things around me. It's just that even if we shared something, it would be something totally different than what he and Coach Fatima would share. And I know that's a very minor, small example, but I want you to understand that we're different, you know, and our husband can be different as well. There are certain things that they can share. It could be a certain movie. It could be a certain, um, a tune or a certain TV show. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So does the go, I go back to that question. Do we want the same thing that our co-wives want? And it doesn't matter if you are initial wife or an additional wife. Does the initial wife want the things that the additional wife wants? Does the additional wife want the things that the, the initial wife wants? Now, some may say yes. Again, I'm going to give you another example. One of my clients, we had a conversation and one of the things was that she was feeling a way about what her co-wife was getting and it was different than what she had. And when we talked and we went through our sessions and things as far as that, I had to ask her the question, do you want, like, what is it that you want? It wasn't even that, do you want what she wants? Because at first when I asked her that, she said yes. Or do you want what she has? I'm sorry. And she said yes. And I said, do you really though? So then I asked her a different question. I said, what is it that you actually want? What is it that you want from your husband? What do you want in your marriage? And forget what you've seen or what you've heard about what she has. What do you want? And don't look at what she has and what you've seen and what you've heard. And I know there are going to be people out of this whole video. They're going to pick that little piece and say, well, he shouldn't be telling her. I never told you that he told her what the other wife has. I never told you that. So let's not jump to conclusions. <laughs> one thing, one thing that you're going to know about me, if you're new to this channel, is that, and you're watching this video, is that I will give you things straight, no chaser, and I want you to hold yourselves accountable. Because that's how we grow, and that's how we enjoy our lives. Because if we start to place blame, or we start to assume things, you know what they say about assumptions? <laughs> it makes a, yeah. So... My thing is, as long as we hold ourselves accountable and we're being intentional in our own happiness, then we can have a, we can have a fulfilling marriage. We can have fulfilling lives. We can enjoy ourselves and everything will be PG King. Not all the time <laughs> because everything is not sunshine and rainbows and kittens and unicorns. However, we give ourselves the permission. We will give ourselves the permission to grow. We give, give ourselves the permission to feel upset. We give ourselves the permission to um, be, a, uh, be um, hurt. Not saying that things don't hurt, but the way we handle things is our choice. So I'm just telling you, I know some people want to take that little piece, that little sound bite and go in about he shouldn't have did this and he shouldn't have did that. I want you guys to learn the lesson. Hear everything out. Let's stop only wanting to see what we want to see and try to find some I gotcha moments. Whether it's in my video, whether it's in Coach Nadir's video, whether it's in Coach Fatima's video, let's learn the lessons. Let's think outside the box or let's open our brains, open our minds, open our, 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 our um, mindscape to find out more about other people and not be so judgmental. So I digress. Let's get back to the story. So I asked her, do she want to, uh, I mean, what is it that she want? Without looking at that, without thinking about it, just thinking about what she wants, what will make her pleased, what will make her fulfilled, what will, um, what will bring connection between her and her husband. What would that look like? And I told her to write the things down. And then she was able to finally get out of the space, out of the mindset of thinking that she has to have exactly what her co-wife has. 
in order to be fulfilled, in order to feel like it's fair or anything like that. And it would be something totally different because we are not our co-wives. We are not our co-wives. And we have to stop looking at what she has or what she's doing because only we, we only see a piece and we only see our interpretation of it. But if we're minding our marriage and understanding what we really want in our marriage, then we realize that things are going to be a lot different for us than it is for anybody else, whether it's our co-wife, whether it's our children, whether it's our uh, parents, whether it's for or whether it's our husband, it doesn't matter because we are all individuals. Now, don't get me wrong. There may be things that we may like that's the same. And the feelings, the feelings of joy and happiness and fulfillment and those different things. Yeah, we want that too. And those are same, the same type of feelings, so to speak but it doesn't have to come the same way. And it may look different for one than it looks for the other. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. If you understand what I'm saying, put I understand in the chat right now, put I understand. And think about it a little bit more when you, when you have this knee jerk reaction of feeling a particular way because your co-wife or you heard your co-wife may have had something. I know this may sound difficult for some people to do because for some reason we're in a society that says that we have to compete with one another for the things that we get. Like we're in a scarcity mindset and a scarcity um, mentality or the, the, the society we live in has a scarcity mentality. And because the mentality is focused on scarcity, it is hard for us to want to celebrate what the other person has. So I ask you, I challenge you to get out of that mindset. I challenge you when you feel yourself thinking about what someone else has versus what you have, take a step back and be grateful for the things that you have. Because the more grateful you are for what you have, the more you're going to get. What you focus on the most is what's going to manifest itself consistently in your life. You want a wonderful marriage? Work on that wonderful marriage. Manifest that for yourself. And I'm not talking about just a, oh, just thinking about it and wishing it and um, the law of attraction is going to do it because I'm just hoping, hoping and praying and wishing. No, take the action. I help those who want to take the action. I take, I help women who are wise, who are resourceful, who want it, who want to have fulfillment in their marriage, who want to have confidence, who want to enhance their connection, increase their connection, to intensify their connection with their husband, who want to increase their confidence and also want to improve their communication because it's not always easy to communicate the things that we don't like or we're not happy with. And sometimes we have to do that in order to get the things that we desire. And I'm not saying just for selfish reasons. I always talk about being selfish for the greater good. My kids laughed at me when I said it. It was like, I'd never heard that before because some of the things that, you know, I say, <laughs> they don't hear all the time, you know, unless they're watching the videos consistently, sometimes they don't hear that, but I, they heard it and they laughed and it was like, what does that mean, Umi? And they called me Umi, for those who don't know, that's, you know, my mom in Arabic. And they said, selfish for the greater good. Selfish for the greater good is pretty much almost a win-win situation. It can be a win-win situation, or it can be where the, 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 the main thing of it all, like what's more important, like the bigger picture, like you see the bigger picture and that's where the win comes from, the bigger picture. And sometimes it's you doing certain things for yourself so everybody else can benefit as well. 
So here's one thing, working on yourself more than you work on anything else, getting in your personal development, you know, hiring a coach. Hello. <laughs> yeah, shameless plug, but I swear it definitely helps because I had to do it myself. The best of the best have coaches. Why? Because they want to be the best because they want someone on the outside that can see that's not so close in the picture that can tell you what you can do better and that can guide you and help you grow. So get in your personal development, get in your personal, getting in your personal development helps you and it helps those around you. And it allows you to improve your marriage, improve your life, improve. You just have fulfillment all around the board. Again, you hear me say these things and I'm smiling and all this other good stuff. I'm not saying everything is not without challenge. I'm not saying that it's not without work, meaning you have to put in the effort. But if you really want it, if you are a wise woman, if you are a woman who want to hold yourself accountable and take yourself to the next level, then I'm here to help you with it. Whether it's you watching these videos on this channel, whether it's through me, my co-wife or our husband, or whether you're signing up for one of the programs, group coaching or one-on-one -on -one coaching, it's your choice and it's your investment in yourself, in your marriage, in your life. And it's your personal thing. It's your personal feeling. It's your personal fulfillment. So you don't have to want what your co-wife has. This is about you. This is about the greater good. And we can have that. We can have the greater good. We can have the good. We can have the fulfillment. But it's our choice. No matter how rocky it may look, we have the choice to work, put in the effort to make it better. I hope you guys got some great information from this. I'm going to cut this short. Um, it's not as short as I would have liked it to be, but sometimes I have to really hone in on some of the things because I'm very passionate about that. I'm very passionate about women wanting better for themselves not complaining, not fussing, not placing blame, those different things, taking accountability, moving forward, growing and enjoying their marriage and their lives. So I hope you are one of those. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Um, if you haven't, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If you received any benefit, any benefit from this video, please share it because sharing is caring. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Make sure you are growing intentionally loving fearlessly and connecting on a higher level every single day. It's Coach Nyla. I'll see you in the next one. Inshallah. God willing. Assalamu alaikum. Peace.